Hello, village. Um, we thank God that we're able to do this and bring the service to you and also the messages and the teachings, uh, whatever uh, we're supposed to be doing. We don't want to close anything down. Uh, even though we're not together, we're still together. So it's uh, this time I wanted to, for my first message to you, to have you to concentrate on trusting God with confidence. Trusting God with confidence. And I'm going to read uh, some passages, and hopefully you will spend time going over them again because I'm probably not going to have time to go deeper into them. But I want us to look at them to together. Look at these passages together. So I'm going to start with Psalm 62 and verse 7. And Psalm 62 verse 7 says, My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. So, and verse 8 says, Trust in him at all times, O people, pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. So if you look at that, Psalm 62, verses 7 and 8, it's really important for us to trust in God. Trusting in God with confidence, knowing that it doesn't matter what is going on inside of you or what is going on outside of what is going on around us, for we know the reason why we are doing it this way is because we have the coronavirus in the world. And uh, uh, some of the numbers may stagger you. Some of the numbers may uh, make you be afraid, but I want you to have trust in God with confidence that he is there for you. Okay, I also want you to look at Habakkuk chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 17 through 19. Habakkuk, the book of Habakkuk. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights. So here is a promise or a confidence. Uh, Habakkuk is talking about having confidence in God that it doesn't matter what is happening around us, we have to put our trust in our God because he cares for us. Now I want to read from Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And I'm going to read verses uh, 6 through 7. Philippians chapter 4. Some of those small books, they're sometimes easy to get to, uh, are not easy to get to. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. And it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything... By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. In other words, don't be afraid about anything. Don't be scared about anything, but be prepared by prayer. So don't be frightened by things, but let things that are happening around you Continue to drive you toward prayer and supplication, prayer and petition with thanksgiving. In everything we give thanks. 
present your request to God. So in a time like this, it's good to know that we can do that with confidence and with assurance. I also want us to look at Romans chapter 12. I know that sometime later you will read them when you uh, have some time. Romans chapter 12, verse 12 says, Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. It's very simple. Be joyful in hope. We have hope. We have hope in our God. So the joy that we have, the world did not give to us. The world did not give it to us and the world cannot take it away. We have hope. It is because of our hope that we can rejoice in time of trouble. We are patient in affliction. We are faithful in prayer. Again, the emphasis on prayer that this will drive us to really trust in God and to have confidence in the fact that he is a God who will do what he has promised. Also, I want us to look at Proverbs chapter uh, 3. I know that this passage, we all probably already know it. Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Trusting in God. This is the basis of all that we're talking about. God is able to keep us and to sustain us in the midst of the coronavirus. God is our refuge and our strength. We're going to read Psalm 91 later on. But what is it that I'm saying? The hymn writer puts it this way. He says, the Lord is our rock. In him we hide. A shelter in the time of storm. Secure, we are secure no matter what betide. A shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. A weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Shade by day, defense by night, no fierce alarm, no foes affright, because he is a shelter in the time of storm. The raging storms may around us beat, will never leave our safe retreat. Why? Because Jesus is our shelter in the time of storm. O rock divine, O refuge there, a shelter in the time of storm, be thou our helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. So what we're saying is uh, God wants us to trust him because he is a faithful God. He is a faithful God. And this hymn is echoing the word of scripture Reminding us that we serve a faithful God. In fact, if you turn to Romans chapter 8, you will see that we are encouraged to trust in God. Get the Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 39. I'm not going to read it, but it's basically telling us that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Paul is writing to the Christians in Rome. I miss all of the things that's going around them. He says, I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is what the Bible is telling us to do, to trust in God who is faithful. Many of you probably know that hymn, Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. 
summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold wilderness to what? To your great faithfulness, mercy, and love. So great is God's faithfulness, and we should trust him at all times. Remember that God will take care of you in these days. I know we are apart from one another, but we are still together because we are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. Trust him with confidence. No matter what you're hearing around you, be not dismayed. The hymn writer said, whatever be tied, because God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day, all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast. God will take care of you. So this is why Christians ought not to let fear overcome your life. Sometimes if you listen to the news, you will think the whole world is going to die. Even if the whole world dies, we have our anchor in God. God already saved us. So we should not be afraid what virus can do to you or what the world can do to you. Trust in God. In times like this, it will test your faith in God. Do you have faith in God? Do you have faith? Hope in God. Do you believe that God can take care of you? I believe God will take care of you. I believe God will take care of me. I believe God will take care of our children. I believe God will take care of our grandchildren. I believe God will take care of our church. I believe God will take care of our city. I believe God will take care of all his people around the world. I believe God will take care of you. But in times like this, be sure you have an anchor and that your anchor holds and grips that solid rock. Who is the solid rock? The solid rock is Jesus. We need a savior. And by the way, while you are home, you have time now to read the Bible. Read it from Genesis to Revelation. You can read the whole Bible several times. Just keep reading because in times like this, we need an anchor. Let me end this teaching this encouragement to you by reading Psalm 91, and that will be the conclusion. Psalm 91. It's a long psalm, but it's good for us to read it together. He who dwells in the shelter, in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. Don't, so don't think that it, it's just happening now. It's been happening since the world was created. God has intervened sometimes, some, sometimes through plagues in order to get people's attention. But he will cover you as a believer, he will cover you as his follower. He will cover you with his feathers. And under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampant. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. Listen to this. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe your eyes with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near you. 
will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guide you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is the promise of the Lord to you. And as we do this throughout the time that our government is asking us to keep distance, we will be coming to you through this medium. Thank you. God bless you.